Hey everyone, welcome back to our 8 week course on how to build a basic FTC robot. If you haven't watched the other videos in our series, please make sure to do that before watching this one. Today we're going to be getting into our final video, which is about the engineering process. So first we're going to talk about the engineering design process and the stages of it. So the first thing that you have to do in the engineering design process is to brainstorm. So the first thing that you should do when brainstorming ideas is figure out what you want your robot to do. Then after that, you can think of different ideas and solutions that you may want to use in order to solve that problem. So for example, you might want to use a specific type of attachment or types of motors or types of materials or decide which type of building method to use. Maybe you're going to use custom made parts or maybe you're going to use um, parts from other parts assembled together. So this is the point of the brainstorming phase. You should also make some type of sketch of your robot just to make sure that you have an idea of what you're doing. After this, you want to go into prototyping. Now there are two stages to prototyping. The first is building. First, you should build a sketch, a actual build model of your prototype, which will be based off of the sketch that you made during the brainstorming phase. You should build it with all the materials that you have outlined and also with the proper building method. So if you wanted to build with custom made parts, you should make sure that you're building with custom made parts. Just to make sure that you know that your design works and you don't have to deal with some issues later on in regards to your building method or something else. The second part will be testing. In order to make sure that your parts actually work, you should test your prototype. You should try using it on the purpose you made it for. So if you're using it in FTC, you would use it on the field and try, for example, last year you would have tried shooting rings into the high goal. Finally, the second, sorry, after this, the next part is going to be CADing and 3D modeling. So after you finish your prototype, you should generally review over what was good, what was bad, what you can improve on, what you want to keep. You should look at all of these things and try to figure out what your design had and also what your design needed. Based off of that, you should create a 3D CAD model on what you want your robot to actually look like, your final design. By doing this, you'll be able to clearly visualize what your finished robot should look like, as well as being able to 3D print uh, parts easier and also being able to pre uh, test beforehand and get a feel for actually building the robot. We'll talk a little bit more about CAD and how to use it later in the video. So after you finish CADing your final design, the next part is going to be building it. So when you build, there are a few important things that you should keep in mind. First, you should make sure that you're following your CAD model because if you don't, you might run into more issues and have to completely rebuild your entire robot from scratch. And that's something nobody really wants to do. Secondly, you definitely should not rush this stage. If you try rushing and try building too much too quickly, you'll definitely start running into errors through like improperly built things, you won't have things tied in properly, there will be a lot of different issues that may hinder your robot and cause you to waste time and end up taking more time out of your FTC season in order to just troubleshoot those issues. So you should make sure that you're not doing any of those because those will eventually cause you more issues and waste even more of your time. You should also remember to be using the proper building techniques and the proper materials that you used in your CAD during your, uh, during your building process to make sure that everything is even. Next, after you finish building your final prototype, your final robots, right, you're going to test it. So in general, for this testing, you should basically just test it the same way you did with the prototype, just play the game, play the FTC um, game for the season, and essentially just get a feel for whether or not your robot is still lacking in some areas, or whether you think you can improve, or whether you think or any other issues that you might find. You should make sure that after you find these issues, you should write them down, and definitely make sure to correct them as soon as possible to ensure that you have a good timeline. Finally, after that, you should just something to keep in mind, which is kind of off of the actual engineering process, is to make sure you're recording the entire thing. Now, this is very important in FTC, especially for the engineering notebook, because the judges really like seeing your robot's timeline, you, how you actually went about solving the issues in the games, and your entire design process. That's something judges really like to see, and is really crucial for a lot of awards as well. So you should make sure that you're taking a lot of pictures, writing a lot of logs, and using as much visual evidence as possible of your entire design process process, whether it be maybe writing down what your design process was, or maybe showing pictures of your robot's timeline from stage one, from like stage one prototype to stage, I don't know, 10 finished. You should make sure that you should 
have all of that documented in preferably a visual format because visuals, visual um, images are always much better than just written down content. It allows the it allows judges to actually see what you're doing. So you should make sure to have as much visual evidence as possible and make sure that you're recording your entire design process if you want to do really well. So Shamit previously talked about CAD in regards to the engineering design process, but I'll talk a little bit more about CAD and the pros and cons of it. So CAD stands for Computer Aided Design or CAD, and it's used to model three-dimensional parts on a computer software. CAD is required for manufacturing custom parts, and it really helps in designing different robot systems. It comes after the prototyping stage and is pretty necessary in order to ensure different parts don't interfere in with each other. So before you spend hours actually building uh, your robot, you could design your ideas and your models in, CAD, in a CAD software, and this can help you make sure that the parts actually connect with each other properly and they actually interlock or maybe they don't interfere with each other and thus they fit within the size restrictions, etc. CAD can also help in deciding what specific parts to buy. So you can CAD the model and you could figure out what parts you use in CADing it and what would actually fit and based on that you could buy those certain parts. CAD, however, can be a little hard to learn, and therefore some rookie teams may choose not to CAD during the design process. However, we highly recommend using CAD, especially if you decide to use um, custom parts. If you're using completely off-the-shelf parts, you may not um, use CAD, but we still highly recommend it even when using off-the-shelf parts because it are, uh, lets you figure out what parts you need to order and it helps you visualize the entire design. So there are a lot of CAD softwares on the market that you can use to actually create and CAD your robots. So first there's Autodesk Fusion 360. This is one of the ones that we have used in the past and it actually processes on your computer. So because all the processing is on your computer, the CAD software can run really slow if you have a low performance computer, which makes it take more time to actually CAD anything. However, Autodesk Fusion 360 is a little hard to collaborate and it does have a free education license, so you could download it for free given that you go to a school. And Autodesk Fusion 360 also has files stored on the cloud, so you don't have to worry about losing your files if you lose your computer. The next one that I'll be talking about is Onshape. So this Onshape software actually runs on your browser and is processed on the cloud. This means that no processing is done on your computer and you're really just getting information from the cloud. So it allows you to run Onshape in a really low perform, really low spec um, device, such as a computer, a really low spec computer, or even a smartphone. Onshape allows, you, allows the user to design individual parts before assembling them using Part Studios, which gives for a better design process. Onshape does have a free education license, just like Fusion 360, and because it runs on the browser, it's pretty easy to collaborate. SolidWorks is the last CAD software that I'll be talking about. SolidWorks is, is usually considered an industry standard. It's made by Dassault Systems, and um, it, however, it requires a computer with pretty high specs. Because all the processing is done on the device, SolidWorks um, will run really slow if you have a bad computer. However, SOLIDWORKS is free for FTC participants. And because SOLIDWORKS is the industry standard, if you um, already took a course for CADing, you may have already learned SOLIDWORKS, or if you plan to go and pursue a STEM field in the future, you may want to use SOLIDWORKS because SOLIDWORKS will likely be used in a field that generally uses CAD. So as you can probably see, there are many different options to choose from and they all have their different pros and cons. We personally would recommend either Fusion 360 or Onshape for catting specifically FTC parts. Thank you for watching our last class in our Intro to FTC Engineering video series. This class was class 7 and it was about Intro to FTC Engineering and Design and we talked a lot about CAD and the different steps in the engineering process. All the links that we talked about will be in the description including the CAD and Engineering Design links. Thank you for watching and we hope you learned a lot over our entire course and we also hope that you apply these concepts into your FTC journey.